In this video, we talk on baby acne and eczema. These two are very similar, but quite different. We'll also discuss on how we treat them. Hope this is helpful to you and hope. Welcome back. This is the health channel. If you have not subscribed yet, please remember to subscribe and also hit the bell icon. Baby acne rash usually appears typically before six weeks of age, though at times it can happen after six weeks of age and at this point in time we refer it as infantile acne. The cause of this acne at this tender age is usually unknown, though it has been linked with high testosterone level in the baby's blood. Most of the time, baby acne is self-limiting and therefore you do not need any aggressive treatment when you're dealing with baby acne. Because of this reason, it's really important to know when you're dealing with baby acne vis-a-vis -vis when you're dealing with any other skin condition that really needs treatment. Eczema rash typically occurs at the age of six months to five years. Though sometimes it can happen before six months or even after five years, though quite rare. Eczema rash is not infectious, that means it cannot be transmitted from one person to another, but most of the time it's linked to allergies. So usually we see eczema rash in children born with history of allergies in the family. 50% of kids who will have eczema rash without to grow it and the rest will actually have eczema rash to adulthood. Having given that brief description of what eczema and baby acne is, let's go to appreciate the difference in their presentations. The first one is age of presentation. Baby acne typically occurs before six weeks of age, though sometimes it can happen after six weeks and at this time we refer it as infantile acne. Eczema rash typically occurs at the age of six months to five years of age, though sometimes it can happen at the age of three months. The second difference is on the pattern of the rash. Baby acne rash typically occurs on the forehead, the chin, the neck, the chest, and the back. That's how the baby acne usually will present. Typically, eczema rash will appear on the cheeks, the back of the neck, the flexor surfaces of the elbow and knee joints, will sometimes spread to the trunk, that means both the chest, abdomen, and the back. Rarely will it go to the diaper area. If it goes to the diaper area, chances are you are not only dealing with eczema rash. So how does the rash look like? The rash from baby acne can have white or black heads, sometimes can have cysts, cyst. that means there is fluid in that pimple. While the rash from eczema is quite vast, usually it's red, you can really appreciate the redness if you're having a light skin, but if your skin is dark, you cannot really appreciate the redness. It usually can be wet, that means it can be weeping or oozing some fluid. can be dry, can be scaly. Sometimes you have patches of either skin being lighter tone or a darker tone than the rest of the body. It's very easy to confuse this with things like uh, ring ones. That's why it's very important to have a proper diagnosis by your either dermatologist or by your pediatrician. So those are the three major differences between baby acne and eczema. So just a question to you as you're watching this. Have you ever had to deal with baby acne or eczema or any other type of rash? And what did you use to help your baby stay? Please remember to leave the answers on the comment section. So how do we treat baby acne and eczema? So assuming you now have a correct diagnosis that your baby is either having baby acne or eczema, or sometimes you can be having both of them. One thing you should remember, if you're dealing with baby acne, remember we said this earlier, the condition is self-limiting. You do not have to treat anything. 
So basically, if you're having your baby having baby acne, what you're supposed to do is proper skin care. This cuts across any baby. For a healthy skin, you need a good cleaning and a great moisturizer. A healthy skin should be well moisturized. So that's the first thing. So you need a, something to clean your baby and you need to have something that's very gentle. That means you need a gentle soap or an emollient. And then after cleaning your baby, you need to apply a great moisturizer. A moisturizer, there are so many types of moisturizers and what works for you may not work for the next person. So the best thing is to shop and see what works for you and stick to that. We recommend the vegetable oils. They seem to be very good and gentle to skin. The third thing is when you're cleaning your baby, please do not use hot water or cold water. It's best to use lukewarm water because this tends to suit the skin even further. And at any point in time, do not scrub your baby's skin. If your baby is having acne or any other type of skin condition, please avoid scrubbing your baby's skin. In case you have acne and they are white heads and they are oozing, and for any reason the skin is broken, remember to see your pediatrician because you risk skin infection. So that's for baby acne. So just in summary, that means you need a gentle soap, a good moisturizer, bathe with lukewarm water, avoid scrubbing or anything that's going to be harsh to the skin. For eczema, one thing you should keep in mind when you're managing eczema, there is no cure for eczema. Kids outgrow eczema. There is no cure. So having this in mind, whatever we do is just to ease the skin. As you see, sometimes the skin is quite dry, so what we need is a good moisturizer, something that's going to keep the skin well moisturized. If it's itchy, you might need to give something to stop the itchy. If it's weeping, you might need to go to see your doctor and address the weeping. The, by weeping, we mean it's oozing some fluid. So usually, managing of eczema is based on but the baseline is number one, a good cleanser. You need a, you need a very gentle soap. Sometimes we'll be advised not to use soap but to use an emollient and a good moisturizer. A good moisturizer is not a greasy moisturizer. A, moist, a good moisturizer should not leave your skin greasy or oily, but it should leave your skin supple. Another thing, as we had said, for eczema, it's allergy. So there are some things that will flare up the eczema. It's very important to know what flares up the eczema. And if possible, avoid such. Because this is the best way to help ease the symptoms. Though any stress into the body may flare up the eczema. By stress, we mean any disease that means any colds, any coughs any flu, any type of infection that will stress up the body, automatically the eczema will flare up. But there are also other irritants such as the type of detergent you use, any laundry chemicals that you use, any um, softeners, fabric softeners that you may use, this may flare up the eczema. So again, be quite observant if you are having issues with allergies, you really need to be very observant to see when does it get worse and when does it get better because once you master that, it's the first step for ease of the eczema symptoms. Sometimes if you try everything and it's not working, you really have to see your pediatrician and they'll be able to prescribe for you some emollients, some soap or some cream which will also be a moisturizer and sometimes in when it's very severe, you will have to use some steroid cream. But please do not go over the counter. Remember to see your doctor so that you are able to be given proper diagnosis, proper plan for management. Sometimes, as we said, it's infection that is flaring up the, the eczema. So instead of keeping on changing and applying steroid cream, sometimes you need to rule out infection 
as a way of easing the exams. And last but not least, it's just a point to note that in case of fever, we, either you're having baby acne or you're having eczema or any other type of rash for that matter, and you're also having a fever, please, please remember to see a doctor. Do not ignore fever when you have a rash. This can mean meningitis sometimes. So remember to always see a doctor whenever you're having a combination of fever and a new rash. It's very clear that these two conditions are quite similar but very different, especially when it comes to the treatment of the two conditions. So as I had asked before, have you ever had to deal with baby acne or eczema or any other skin rash for that matter? What did you use? Did it work? Did it not work? Please remember to leave that on the comment section. As for now, please subscribe if you have not done so. Keep watching your health. Keep watching the health channel.